Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to use the new narrative parties system that is in narrative 3.4. Basically it allows players to uh, do quests and dialogues as a team. So if I start a dialogue here, you can see the dialogue automatically begins for all the players in the party. And you can see that if a uh, member of the party selects dialogue option, it will replicate across the party. So this is an exciting new update. And the best part is it also works for quests. So if we start a quest on our party, you can see that it begins it for everyone in the party. You can still do solo quests and dialogues even if you're in a party. So it doesn't force you to use only party or only solo. You can use a mixture of the two. But you can see that if I take the batteries, you can see it's completing it for both of the players, right? Because this is just one quest that is happening across everyone in our party. So it's a pretty cool system and today we're going to show you how to use it. So let's get started. If you haven't done the main Narrative 3 tutorial that's on the channel, do not worry. Uh, this is the finished Narrative 3 tutorial which we're going to be using today and I will leave the download to this in the description. So you can just download this and skip ahead to where I am and then we can begin. To follow along you will need to own a copy of Narrative 3 which is linked in the description. And we're going to be using Unreal Engine 5.3 for today's video, so make sure that you have that installed, and make sure that you install Narrative to 5.3 as well. Okay, so we're here in the finished tutorial from the other time. Again, you don't have to have completed this. The download link will be in the description. It's a 5.3 project, so I'm using Unreal Engine 5.3. And we have Narrative 3.4 enabled, so we're all good to go if you have that. You should be good to follow along. So how do you set up a narrative party and have players do quests together? If you did the tutorial, you will have a player controller with a narrative component on it. So this is kind of your player's solo quest and dialogue component. It exists on the controller. The way that party dialogues work is you put a party narrative component on some sort of actor or I like to use the game state. I think the game state is a good place to put it. And then multiple players will share it. So let me just show you because it's a lot easier to show you. I'm going to make a game state because the project doesn't actually have one right now. Game state base. BP third person game state. And on the game state, we're going to add a narrative party component. And you can see it actually has a bit of a description here. A narrative component intended to be shared by multiple clients. This allows for some very cool functionality. Teammates can play quests and dialogues together with each other. So that is that. And there's only really one setting for now. I intend to add more, but you can control who is allowed to select dialogue options. So only the party leader is allowed to select dialogue by default, but you can make it so that anyone in the party can select a dialogue option. Uh, we'll just leave it as the default for now. But how do you set up the party is, is the better question. So we'll go into our game mode. We'll make sure to set our game state to the custom one that we made. And we're going to add the players into the party as they join the game. So because we've put it on the game state, there's only going to be one party for the entire game. If you wanted 10 different parties in your game, you'd have to create you know 10 different replicated actors and put the party on there. But the game state's just a nice, easy way to do it. So we'll come back into the game mode. We've selected our game state. We're going to add the handle starting new player function. Because in there, we're going to add each player to the party. So when the new player comes into the game, we're going to grab their narrative component. Because we know that there is a narrative component on the player controller. So we can just grab it using this function. And then you simply do add. Oh, we need to get the game state. We need to cast it to the one we just made. And then get the party. And then add. Add party member. And then just add the person into the party. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying as the players join the game, just add them into the party automatically. And you also need to remember to do add call to parent function. And just plug that in like that. Compile and save. So 
So at this point, if you start a game up and you have multiple players, they will all be in the same party together. Uh, but that's not very much use to us just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the third person controller. You can see by default, I'm just adding the UI to the screen straight away. This probably isn't a very good idea. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of this. And instead of on begin play adding it, we will add the player's UI to the screen when they get assigned their party. So if you click on narrative, there should be an on joined party event. You should be able to add that. And let's actually do a print string just to make sure that this is working as we expect. We'll just say joined party. And then we'll plug that in like that. So only add the UI to the screen after the player has a party just to make sure that's all been initialized. So if we compile, save, and try a game out with two players in it, and we'll make them both clients, if we hit play, we should see party joined. Here you go, joined party, right? So these two players are actually in a party together. However, if we start talking to the NPCs, you can see it's happening solo. It's not happening as a party, right? The, uh, the dialogues are independent of each other. They're not doing them as a party. So this is an important thing to note, as if you're using party quests and dialogues, you can still do solo quests as well. So just because you're in a party with someone doesn't mean that you need to be doing all of your quests and all of your dialogues as a party. You can still have your own solo ones as well. And so it's just nice to have that sort of versatility. But if you do want to start it as a party dialogue, which we kind of do, that's kind of the whole point of this tutorial, we're going to open our dialogue trigger. And instead of just grabbing the narrative component and beginning dialogue, we want to actually get party component and begin it on that instead. That's all you have to do. And by beginning it on your party, it will begin for everyone in the party. That's the default. That's what happens automatically. So check this out. When I walk up to the NPCs, it begins a party dialogue. You can tell it's a party dialogue because everyone in the party has started the dialogue. And because I have party leader controlled to turn on, you can see that other people in the party don't actually get the dialogue options. Only the party leader gets the dialogue options. And if I select a dialogue option, you can see the camera's looking at each player. It's a little hard to tell because they are the same player. But if I select the dialogue option, player two's camera will cut to player one because player one selected something. You'll see this. When I click this, see how the camera cuts to the other player? And it's all synced up. Where this gets really cool, though, is this is also shared quests. And so check this out. I'm going to start this quest. And you can see that the quest starts for both players because it's a party quest. So by default, if you start a quest from a dialogue and that's a shared dialogue, it will begin for your entire party. So all of our party is doing this quest. However, we do have to make one minor change because it will not work at the moment. We just want to search for the find item task that comes with this tutorial. And instead of doing owning controller, you actually want to get the owning quest. Get group members for each. And then just plug in like that. So this is a change that you have to do with these uh, group quests. You don't have to convert all your tasks over to this. Uh, but all the ones that come with narrative are already converted over for you. If you're doing a solo quest, this will just return the one player. But if you're doing a party quest, this will return all of the people in your party. So essentially what we're saying here is if anyone in the party finds an item update the quest. That's just the change that we have to make for this tutorial because this tutorial was made before the party's update. So once you've done that, we'll try this out. So we will do the quest. You can see it begins for both players. And the way that quests work is if anyone in the party is to find the item, you'll see that the UI updates for all of the players in the party. So you can see we have two out of three batteries. If anyone in the party finds that third battery, you can see it updates and we need to go back to Rupert. 
Now I found the batteries on this player, but the way the group quests work is any player can go back to Rupert and complete that step. Any player in the in the group is allowed to go back and complete steps. So if we talk to Rupert again, you can see, yes, I have him right here. And you can see it completes the quest for everyone. You can see the lights now turned on. It's all replicated. Everyone in the party is in sync here. And yeah, it's, it's a very simple setup but there are some caveats so let's get into some of the more technical aspects of the group quests so we started this dialogue as a party dialogue if you'll remember and then as the group leader i selected this option here and you might be wondering well how does it know that we want to begin the quest for our party how did it know that it, it was a you know not supposed to complete it for our solo player well if you are doing a quest as a party the owning comp will be set to the party component. So basically the owning component of the dialogue will be the party. And so if you use a begin quest node, this component that comes through will be your party's component. And so it will automatically begin the quest on your party. And so you could maybe do this differently if you wanted to. And there is actually some customization here. So I'll show you here under the parties tab if you didn't want to begin this quest for all of the party what you could do is under party event policy you could change it to all party members what that'll do is that'll begin that quest but everyone in the party will be doing that solo by selecting party we're saying begin the quest for your party if we say all the party members we're saying everyone in the party should begin that quest but on their own narrative component and there's even a party leader option so you could say only the party leader does that quest i don't really know how often you'd be using that but maybe you want to use that every now and then um and so this is important to understand imagine that you want to give everyone in the uh, quest a reward so you might have a event that does that you would absolutely want to make sure that you had it set to all party members right because you probably want to give all of the party members the reward right you probably don't want to give the party leader the reward um, and you don't really want to give the party itself the reward because that doesn't really make sense the the party itself probably doesn't have an inventory or anything like that so this is important to select this because it basically defines how we're going to run the event on a party if you're not doing a party dialogue this option does nothing it's not it's completely ignored it's only if you're running this dialogue on a party that this option matters Conditions are also very relevant to parties and there is a setting that you need to learn now if you're going to be using party dialogues. If you're not, don't worry, <laughs> that it's not gonna do anything. But this party condition policy defines how conditions should be run. So you can see here, Rupert is gonna check if you have the batteries or not. And you can say, yes, I have them right here or no, I don't have them yet. Well, who, who, you know, who is this running on? Is quest blinded by the light at got at state got batteries? Do we want to check if your party's at that state? Do we want to check if all of the party members are at that state? What do we actually want to do? And so that's what this party condition policy does, right? You can have a condition succeed if any other party members pass the condition. You have a condition succeed if the party itself passes the condition, which is what we're doing in this instance. We're saying, is your party at the got batteries state in their quest? You can make sure all the party members pass a certain condition, otherwise it doesn't pass. Or you can just say the party leader has to pass a condition. And so there is a little bit of complexity about like how do you want to run a condition on the party. So that is another thing that you'll have to learn if you are doing party dialogue. I do actually want to show you in the, um, in the game state, if I change it from party leader controlled to all party members controlled, how this works is you can now see that anyone in the party can select a dialogue option. It's really hard to tell these two players apart, but you'll notice that if I select an option over here, the camera will cut to the person that selected the reply. So that our party members stand out a little bit more, I'm just going to right click on my character MetaHuman and create a child. And I'll just call this MetaHuman B. So I'm just making a separate character. And I'm so on the second character, I'm just going to change the shirt material to use 
a different material. That way we can tell our characters apart. You could even make this guy bald by removing his hair asset. So now we can definitely tell these characters apart. We'll go into the game mode. And in our game mode, to assign multiple different controllers, we'll just override get default pawn class for controller. Just gonna delete that and we'll do select. And we'll do get num players. We will subtract one. Plug that in. And then we will select metahuman and we will select metahuman b and we will compile save and play and now we should have two different characters so that should just make it a bit more obvious that these are two players that are in the same party together so yeah if any of the players in the party start that party dialogue you can see it will be replicated for all of the party members so cool So yeah, this is a relatively experimental feature and we're definitely looking to build this out a bit more. Uh, but for now in testing, it seems to be working pretty nicely. And um, yeah, we hope you guys enjoy this feature. It's really been requested. We've had a lot of people wanting this. Um, I am getting a little error here. I think this is probably just, it's probably not something very important. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you're the local player before you add the UI, that's what that error is, if you are getting that error. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about parties, please come into the Discord and we can assist. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you later.